Hello my soccer universe. Well, let's talk about some actual soccer. Uh, it's rare these days, so let's do it what happened in the Champions League. Uh, like last time, I'm wearing my Italy 2006 fake jersey. Um, in honor of Atalanta, it is blue, it is black. I don't have an Atalanta jersey and I know I should get one. Um, let me think about that, I might actually do so soonish um, but I didn't put the losers from yesterday up there but let's not start with uh, Atalanta let's start actually in Leipzig because that story is quickly told Leipzig dominated Spurs Spurs continued their horrible trend and I don't I mean we already knew it started on the porch when Mourinho came in it's a little bit up and then it all went downhill again I have no idea and Mourinho reminds me a lot about the United moaning Mourinho that we had a bit more than a year ago so I that change did not really work out yes there are injuries we have Kane out we have Son out we had Bergwijn out so uh, yeah <laughs> Leipzig is what Leipzig does best um, I think it was one of the first attacks in the 10th minute that uh, Werner placed the ball to Sabit, so it's slightly outside of the box, hits it nicely and goes into uh, the left corner. I have to say Sabit has been outstanding and if we had a better national team coach, I, I would really rate him as one of the breakout stars for Euro 2020, if it should ever happen. Uh, Werner then actually makes it 2-0, but is chalked off for uh, offside uh, after VAR interference, but then a nice cross by Angelino and Sabitzer heads in his first headed goal of the season uh, to make it 2-0 for uh, Leipzig, and the game felt that it's done. The only thing that was kind of this straw that you can claw onto was that, you know, uh, against Ajax, Ajax also had a 3-0 aggregate lead, Exa exact same situation, and then uh, Lucas Moura scored three in the second half, it never was coming, yeah, Lucas Moura once came in there, but never was really coming, um, actually the story of the second half was actually then Mukele, who got the ball into his face, and it completely knocked him out, I mean, uh, at first you'd think, yeah, just ball in face, and I think serious, it looked really serious, for a while there but uh for, for, for fortunately it seems that he's all right but he had to take him off the field sabitzer i think then comes off uh l later uh in the 87th for forsberg and forsberg with his first touch makes it three nil so basically same position leipzig moving on uh the game was played with spectators which is something cherish it while you can maybe the game at Anfield might still be played behind, uh, with spectators and then we'll see how the next play uh, games are going. I know that uh, Bayern Chelsea is also behind closed doors already. Speaking of closed doors, this is what we had in Valencia and I'm not sure if the game went the, uh, the way it went because it was behind closed doors but Boy, were there many goals scored, and boy, was it fun. Uh, maybe that this uh, the suspense was not really there, but as a game per se, it was a typical Atalanta game. Um, Ilicic, in, or, or in the first uh, minute, well, second minute, is uh, fouled by Diakabi in the uh, box penalty, 1-0 Atalanta. And in many ways you thought, yeah, that is it for the tie. Uh, given how the game went, non, not necessarily. Um, Gamero uh, makes it 1-1 after really, it was a, a nice through ball uh, that Palomino wants to clear, but with the clearance he basically puts it into the path of Gamero, who makes it 1-1. Valencia is then trying to get the lead, because at that point, yes, you only need three more for... Um, <laughs> I was going with the fingers for, to make it into uh, overtime. Uh, but overtime was quickly off the menu uh, when again Diakabi handball uh, at the edge of the box. VAR saw it. Ilicic immediately was also screaming. Ilicic uh, makes his second penalty go 2 1 for Atalanta. And I think at that point, with a 6 uh, 2 aggregate lead, uh, I think everyone was expecting Atalanta to move on. The question is, will Atalanta get the win or will Valencia do something? Well, Valencia tried and Ferran Thomas ca uh, Torres came on 
and after a nice cross, Gamero can head it uh, in, make it 2-2. And then uh, after Parejo sees Ferranton, Torres even makes it 3-2. Uh, at which point I thought, yeah, okay, Valencia will probably get, 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 get the win and Italy will not uh, get the points for Atalanta advancing. No, I was wrong about it because Ilicic had a real problem with that and made two more goals. Um, one from a um, uh, from a distance, just slamming it in, and the other one I have to assist by Froela. Four goals. There have been only two other players in the Champions League that have been scoring four goals for Italian teams. Marco van Basten. I remember that one against Göteborg, and I think it was a hat trick within uh, the twelve minutes, which was a world record at the time. Um, and Andriy Shevchenko, two Milan players, and now Atalanta. So Atalanta moves on with two wins with an. 8-4 aggregate score. Uh, to be honest, the way this game was, was going, there were probably even more goals in there because Atalanta just went forward, 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 and yeah, they were open on the back. Um, we'll be curious to see who they will play next, next round, how, how they will be going forward, um, and where will they play. So we'll have to see about that, and yeah, we have to see how the other games were going too. Wednesday evening was definitely more interesting uh, than what we had on Tuesday because there was, at least in one game, positive excitement uh, there and the game seemed to be going one direction but another. Uh, let's talk about uh, that game, uh, Liverpool against Atletico Madrid, um, which for most of the time was all about Liverpool attacking Atletico Madrid, who uh, two, two, two years didn't even have, was not defending well, but Jan Oblak, this is was a great goalkeeper does for you. Um, even if your team is not um, fully in the match, a great goal, goalkeeper can bail you out, and I think Jan Oblak did this today on all accounts. Uh, making many saves um, and to be honest, most of the saves were not even that spectacular but it was great positioning of his part so yeah uh, when I watch and Ed, I observe this with German commentators uh, if a team is attacking and attacking and then a team is known to be more defensive they call them the minimalists and then uh, kind of the negative part um, to be honest they lack the appreciation for what especially an Oblak in this case was doing. I think Atletico Madrid uh, would have been ripe for the taking for Liverpool. However, Liverpool definitely have to uh, blame themselves for not taking the chances because they had numerous, numerous chances. When I look at the statistics, I mean, they had a total of 34 shots and only 11 are on goal. I have to say that um, Salah and Mane uh, even Firmino, even if they had good passing or uh, 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 shooting lanes, I always found I always had to think they want to do it fancy. And uh, Liverpool just could not break down Atleti. I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed that Atleti played in black. I mean, it was all right. Uh, but even though I don't like those light blues, they might have given a better contrast, but then of course the referee was light blue. So yeah, so basically the game started with both teams a little bit even, then Atleti fell back without really having this tight defense that they had in Madrid. Uh, it has to has, has been. And it took Liverpool quite a few tries and right before the halftime, uh, Giorgino, Wijnaldum, Wijnaldum, can head one in and he was it was a free head I mean this is a goal that you need to take um, second half uh, the onslaught continues and you really had the feeling if Liverpool makes the second goal right there the the ties done and dusted it was not uh, but you know Atletico hung in there and I the more I watched the more I got the feeling uh, that oh this might not be Liverpool's night and for me Two scenes stood out when Mane twice tried a bicycle kick to make a goal. And I'm thinking, Liverpool is getting too fancy. When Salah is again coming over the right side, he makes his little dummy or whatever. Uh, 
and then takes a shot that is not very well placed. I mean, there were chances there that you, if you place the shot well, yes, you can make it. But uh, they try to do it too fancy schmancy, to be honest. And I think this is what in the end cost them. Um, a very similar goal to the first goal, except that, uh, you know, went to overtime. And overtime in the 94th minute, Firmino had it. Similar position as Van Alderman, but we went to uh, against the post and then uh, he can put it in 2 0 for Liverpool. And I think most people expected from that moment on that Liverpool will advance. Uh, they didn't, though, make um, didn't count though on A that Atleti will not try to go forward and B that um, they didn't consider their weakest link, and that was the goalkeeper. Who made a, he wanted to play it from 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 back made a really bad pass, absolutely horrid pass, into the path of Joao Felice, who plays it on to um, Llorente, not <laughs> Fernando Llorente, <laughs> uh, and he puts it in, um, it makes it two one, and that was the game turner. Uh, I forgot to say that in uh, regulation, uh, Liverpool also twice hit the with Wood, very special, the shot by Robertson uh, around the 60th. That was the big chance, and I think that was also where you kind of had the feeling it might not be Liverpool's night. And with this goal from Llorente, the tide was turning, because Atleti now, you could feel the... Uh, uh, Liverpool was dejected because you did all this hard work, hard work for over 90 minutes. You get a 2-0 lead and then you give up a goal because of a goalkeeping mistake when the other goalkeeper is standing on his head. And yeah, it gets even better after Morata assist who came on late. Um, Llorente takes a shot from a distance. It's also in, again, a great goalkeeper saves that one. And there you have it right at the... Uh, Half of half of overtime, it's 2-2. Two, two. Liverpool needs two goals. Uh, at that moment, I mean, this was a crazy first half of overtime because uh, how often do you see an overtime with um, that many uh, um, overtime period with three goals? I mean, I thought there are more goals in there and I thought that Liverpool might actually get one. Uh, but to be, but to, to be honest, at that moment, then Atletico defended well. And at the end, Morata finishes a counter and gives Atleti even the win. 3-2. And so both finalists from last year are out and uh, it becomes a more open Champions League campaign. I mean, um, we have Liverpool out, we have Spurs out, uh, and let's see who else will go out very soon. Um, let's move to the other game, which was uh, PSG against Dortmund. Um, first things first. This was played behind closed doors, and I remember they were switching back between uh, back and forth between the games. They started in Liverpool, and I still had the roar from of Anfield in the in my mind. And then I hear I hear songs here. This is an empty stadium, but I hear, I mean, it sounds like empty, but there is actual chanting. Yes, there were fans outside cheering on the team. We already had yesterday, uh, the day before uh, Valencia, the fans were actually making a, a line of, uh, to greet the, uh, the players, which is actually not what you want. And that defeats the actual purpose of having a game behind closed doors. But I think I'll make a third Corona update on that because uh, too many things happening um, but yeah uh, the other thing that was of note um, that within a minute a name I was lying on, on on the floor and I was even choking uh, my wife said I see Neymar and I said yeah and then a minute later it was just before kickoff a minute later he's lying on the floor and I said yeah Neymar is doing what Neymar does best uh, then 10 minutes later, he's again lying on the floor, but this time I understood because he fell really badly with, with, with the shoulder. But, you know, Neymar is frustrating <laughs> because you know he has all the talent. And then he does this. Uh, he probably has a very low pain threshold or whatever. But um, I have to 
say that yesterday Neymar was outstanding. And not only offensively, he actually was working the pitch up and down, up and down, which is something you do not expect. I was a little bit surprised about the PSG lineup. Uh, I mean, I knew that Verratti is out and the Meunier is out. Um, but the overall lineup, yeah, and Mbappe was uh, also out, but that um, Icardi was not in. That was, uh, so, so, so surprised me. And then uh, the uh, Ge uh, Idrissa Gueye should, Ge should be a, a great one. But, you know, Paredes and so on, um, not exactly the players that uh, would instill a lot of confidence in me. But, hey, they played well, which is something I cannot say for Dortmund. And when I saw the Dortmund lineup and the PSG lineup, I thought, ooh, Dort Dortmund will dominate midfield. No, everything but Dortmund seemed to be caught in between the... Um, uh, yeah, we can attack, we can make a goal, we are built for going forward, but we cannot open ourselves up because PSG is going to punish us. And that was the undoing. Uh, Cavani had already a big chance where Burki made it, made, made it safe. That was probably his best um, deed of the day because I have to say, uh, again, goalkeeping and soccer is, and especially the goal is such an exposed position, but soccer in its very essence is a weakest link game. If your weakest link is worse than the weakest link of your opponent, you're probably going to lose. It's not the star place, it's the weakest link uh, that you have to look at. So yeah, uh, great chance by Cavani, but it was a corner kick by Di Maria that was maybe nicely taken, but I have to say the defending, I mean they were man to man, um, Hakimi lets Neymar go, and I have to say Birkin needs, needs to get the ball. Uh, he was hesitating and then Neymar can just head, head it in 1-0 at that point. PSG is on uh, and there was not much coming from Dortmund in the first, 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 first half. And Bernat, after an assist by Sarabia with the slightest of touches, makes it 2-0 at the half. Dortmund did a little bit more in the second half but never could convince. Never got anything and I have to say Burki made more... Uh, you know, not glaring mistakes, but they were more uh, serious situation where I thought a good goalkeeper has those. And so PSG reverses the curse. I'm wearing PSG. I actually had yesterday the last season's PSG jersey in XXL in my hand for 25. Almost bought it, but uh, in, 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 in the end decided not to. Uh, very late, Emre Can got sent off because he pushed Neymar to the ground. They had a little toss lines on him, of course, got the yellow. Uh, but yeah, I the other thing that was a little bit surprising, but I know that Mbappé was sick. Uh, Mbappé came on uh, late in the like in the, in the 16th. I thought, ah, they are finishing it off, and it seemed like prime. If you have uh, Mbappé in good health, I think he will finish you off right there and then. But was enough. PSG moves on, and so we have four. Uh, for a uh, quarterfinal set, um, last news, but I will do this also then in a dedicated Corona update. Uh, Rugani from Juventus has coronavirus. I'm not, I'm sure that next week we won't have, uh, at least you were playing Lyon. I think, yeah, let's see. I'll refer you to the video after that. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday. Those are my thoughts and observations. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.